some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator met the male and female and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another commits adultery, his disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they are born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this text, Jesus is showing himself as what he is, true God, supreme legislator, because he is correcting Moses. Those around him say and reproach him, and the disciples agree with those who tell Jesus that he is correcting Moses. He says, Moses has come this far, and what Moses said has many good things, the Ten Commandments. But there are also things that did not come from God, and I, who am God, have come to correct even Moses, the highest legislator of Israel, because he is God. Jesus' words about divorce, which he compares with adultery, I mean divorce followed by the new union, Jesus' words are not human words. It is the word of God spoken of course by Jesus, who was also a true man, but it is the word of God. It is a message from God. When there are Catholics who get angry with the priests who tell them, you are divorced, remarried, without having obtained a marriage annulment. I am sorry, but you can't confess or take communion. When they get angry with these priests, with me, I periodically receive letters full of grievances and insults. They should not be angry with us. They should be angry with Jesus Christ, because we are not doing anything other than obeying what Jesus Christ has said and taught, and passing it to others. We... The priests have not established this law. Jesus has said this law. If it seems to you that Jesus is very demanding, get angry with him. But not with those of us who are simply messengers and who cannot, nor should we, do anything other than be faithful messengers. Faithful transmitters of the message that Jesus has left. Why does the Lord do this? Why does he harden something that until then it was allowed? Of course, not only in the Jewish world, but in the pagan world around him as well. Why? To protect the family. And to protect the weak part, that is the wife and the children. To protect that essential, vital element for the human being, the present and the future, that essential element without which the human being cannot live, which is the family. That is why the Lord is firm and is very serious about this and compares divorce to adultery. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another, he commits adultery against the first. Whoever divorces her husband and marries another, commits adultery against the first. They are the Lord's words in defense of the weak, woman, family, children. Of course, there will be terrible situations, so many, but there is also marriage annulment that since the reform made by Pope Francis is much more accessible to everyone. 
you have to try to get such a nullity, at least try to. An annulment is not a Catholic divorce, because we cannot do it. Nullity is to honestly investigate, based on data, which the people who request it sincerely offer it. If not, even if they get the nullity, as they have deceived, such nullity before God is useless. However, when the judges investigate and then give a sentence based on the sincere data provided, then it is that there has never been a marriage, even if there were children involved, even if a long time had passed. If there was never a marriage, then that person can remarry without any problem of conscience. Nevertheless, if there was a marriage, even if the marriage did not go well, if there was a marriage, we cannot break it. What God has joined together, let no man separate it. We can't break it. It is not our issue for us. We repeat a whim of the priest, the church's whim. It is not our issue. It is Jesus who says so and establishes it to defend the weak, the family, woman, children. Let us ask the Lord for marriages. Let us ask the Lord for those who are in difficulties. But let us also ask to give us enough humility to accept his orders, his commandments, even if it is difficult for us to put them into practice. Amen.